One of the most important themes in American history is that of the westward migration that led to the rapid settlement of the continental U.S. As our researchers delved into the family tree of guest star Adrienne Wilkinson, we discovered that it was also an important theme for her personally. By the early 1900s, westward migration had led all 16 of her great-great-grandparents to Crawford County, Missouri. American westward expansion essentially began when the first English colonists came to the New World. However, historians tend to mark the start of the westward movement from the time that settlers began to move away from the Atlantic coast. By the 18th century, this migration had, in some places, pushed the frontier up to 200 miles inland. Why the big push west? As desirable land continued to fall into the hands of the elite planter aristocrats, those of the lesser status had to migrate further west to find inexpensive, suitable land. By 1750, there were established settlements along the Potomac River into the Shenandoah Valley, and folks were ready to push further and cross the Appalachian Mountains into the massive interior of the continent. Others moved west from the New England colonies seeking religious moderation. Again, by 1750, these migrants had reached west to New Hampshire and Vermont and as far north as Maine. Migration out of Pennsylvania and New York was a little different. The westward movement was hindered quite a bit by powerful Native American groups until the mid-18th century when even these groups felt the pressure to migrate in order to obtain land. They moved into Ohio, and a flurry of colonial migrants were quick to follow on their heels. Around this same time, folks from the middle colonies began to travel down the Shenandoah River and settled in what is present-day North Carolina. The Northwest Ordinance of 1787 led to a more managed expansion into the Midwest. There was a steady migration into the land that would eventually become Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Next, in 1803, came the Louisiana Purchase, made by President Thomas Jefferson. This led to the successful managed migration in the North being replicated in the South, and by 1836, even more states, including Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, and Arkansas, entered the Union. Transportation methods became more advanced, which furthered the rapid settlement of the Midwest. The Erie Canal improved access in the North, while steamboats assisted migrants moving up the Mississippi River into Arkansas and Missouri. In the case of Adrian's family, all roads eventually led to Crawford County, Missouri, and by the 1900s, four ancestors had migrated from North Carolina, four from Pennsylvania, three from South Carolina, one from Tennessee, and one from West Virginia. There were even two ancestors who came across the Atlantic Ocean, one from Germany and one from Denmark. What do you think now learning about your family's presence in Crawford County? It does amaze me because my I knew there was some of that because my parents grew up in towns that were neighboring, side by side, very small towns. If you look at the uh, the local cemeteries, you can sort of trace ancestry to a certain degree within the family line. So I knew we'd been there for a while, but it had I had no idea that it was that length of time or that breadth of people. It's really pretty fascinating. We had a little more to share about Adrian's Danish ancestor. Frederick Louis Cruz was born July 17, 1869 in Osterlindet, Denmark at the age of 16. He came to the United States in 1885, shortly after the greatest Danish emigration took place in 1882, when 11,618 Danes had settled in the U.S. We're not sure where he went first, but we know by 1898 he was in Crawford County as he married his sweetheart Alice Rohrer there on December 6th. The couple had eight children, all born in Crawford, and Fred and Alice stayed there for the remaining years until his death in 1944 and hers in 1970. Quite handsome. 16 years old to make that journey just seems extraordinary to me. And just not knowing what to expect, not knowing the work that you may or may not find, there's just... Yeah, it seems very dicey, so you had to be incredibly brave. I think about that sometimes of just how difficult every single day was in comparison to our lives of just, mm -hmm. you know, how you didn't eat unless you had a thriving garden and, yeah. you know, just little things like that where every single day your tasks, your to-do list for the day was so extraordinary. 
Our researchers focused on one set of Adrian's ancestors, her fourth great-grandparents Oliver Bullock and Rebecca Lyles, who migrated from North Carolina to Missouri. Oliver Bullock was born in 1793 in Granville, North Carolina. He is said to be the son of George Bullock and Mary Freeman Bullock and was born on the plantation that his grandfather settled in 1768 when he came to Granville from Maryland. Oliver married Rebecca Lyles in 1821, also in Granville. This is the marriage bond for Oliver and Rebecca. As you can see, he signed his name Olive, which appeared on several of his documents. This was a time when there was a mass migration from the populated area of North Carolina to Kentucky and Tennessee, where land was less expensive and more readily available. The Bullocks were one of the many families that faced trials and tribulations while striving to make a good life for their family in unfamiliar terrain as they traveled westward. We're not certain exactly when Oliver and Rebecca set out to Tennessee, but we know they arrived in Warren County by January of 1830, as that is when and where their oldest daughter Susan was born. By 1833, the small family had found their way to Bedford County, Tennessee. Their next child, George, was born there in September of 1833. Oliver and Rebecca stayed in Bedford for the next several years, during which time the rest of their eight children were born. Also during their time there, Oliver was ordained as an elder in the Bethbury Church. The 1840 U.S. Federal Census confirms the family of 11 was still in Bedford County that year. Sadly, it seems that three of his children, two daughters and a son, died sometime prior. Details are not certain, but it could have been during a typhoid epidemic that hit Bedford County, Missouri. So, you know, right off the bat, not only are they traveling through this rough terrain and, you know, mountainous territory, but they wound up lost, losing several children in the early 1840s. So that, that was sad. Family stories indicate that at some point after this, the Bullocks left Bedford County, Tennessee and located near Memphis for a bit. However, the spread of malaria was quite bad near the Mississippi River at that time. Given that the first epidemic in Memphis in 1826 had killed more than 10% of the population, it's no wonder that Oliver and Rebecca decided to join a caravan that was going to a new land of fine rivers and fertile valleys. A valuable addition to their caravan was a half-breed Indian who acted as a guide and interpreter with the other Indians. With the rest of the families in the caravan, the Bullocks settled in the vicinity of Steelville, Crawford County, Missouri, where the families took land grants of 160 to 360 acres of land. I'm amazed by several parts of that story. That's incredible. And it's just the idea of having to move to escape disease because it's that prevalent. I mean, I guess right now, if we had had the option to avoid COVID that way, we would have. I just, I had no idea that was uh, the real impetus for their, their move, which is pretty incredible. But I'm loving the fact that they had this information about Steelville because of an Indian guide. That's remarkable. It gives me sort of a, an even larger sense of gratitude to that community that knowing that, you know, the indigenous population to some degree also helped dictate where my own family ended up residing. That's, wow. Yeah, that's really, whew. <laughs> We aren't sure exactly when Oliver and his family arrived in Steelville, but he is found there by the 1850 U.S. Federal Census as a farmer owning $100 of real estate. Six years later, in 1856, he bought another 40 acres, where he built a grist mill, which he used to provide for his family. Oliver and Rebecca did well in Steelville. They were active and treasured members of the Crooked Creek Cumberland Presbyterian Church, which is believed to be the first church organized in Crawford County. And from the meetings of the church record, it actually states that in November 5th of 1852, Oliver Bullock was elected as a ruling elder of the church. He was installed on the fifth Sunday meeting. Now, we don't know many details, but a family story reportedly told to Oliver's grandchildren gives us a little insight into their grandpa, and apparently he was quite a skilled log roller. It is said he did not meet his match until a young fella beat him when he was 65. Maybe it runs in the family. <laughs> you never know, right? By 1860, Oliver and Rebecca were found in Union Township, still in Crawford County. It would seem this is where they lived the rest of their days. Oliver to the age of 80 and Rebecca to 74. Mm -hmm. 